Welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to build a night vision spotter Australian style. So why do you want to use one of these? Uh, various reasons. I use it for looking for pigeons in barns at night and I also I'm a bat enthusiast so I like looking for bats and it helps me find the micro bats flying around at night. So there's various reasons why you should do one. Um, particularly if you're a hunter they're extremely good. If you've got feral animals or prey that are a bit spooky this is a good device to find them. So we'll go through and I'll show you how to do them. Okay the ergonomics of it. Building this spotter I must admit is a little bit on the heavy side so the casing itself was from an old CCTV camera that someone gave me so I stripped it all out and pulled it apart and modified all these different parts. Now after using it out there at night I found that I needed a strap. So that's the first thing you might have to be aware of if you build one slightly on the heavy side and want all the bits and pieces. And it's much more comfortable to carry around night just in front of you like this. Now using the device I found that holding it up like this without the strap created a lot of weight and I was eventually pulling it down. So that made it hard. So with the strap on and with my hands locked on by my side, I can hold it comfortably down here and then just tilt the screen. So it's got a little reversing screen on this and using it like that, I could be really comfortable looking around for the critters at night. So that's the way to use it. Well, I found the easiest way using it at night. Okay, now we'll show you the external parts. Okay, here's a close-up of the external shot of the night vision spotter. I'll go through it piece by piece so you've got an idea. The first one is probably the lens. This is the lens here. Now, the lens to use is a 5 to 100 millimeter telescopic. Absolutely brilliant really fantastic which hopefully I'll show you some demonstration of it later and it fits onto a camera that's called a Watek 902H and combining the two is beautiful so the camera sits inside there nicely I had it machined out and then this just fits straight onto it the second part is the illuminator now this illuminator is pretty important this is a T20 just fantastic again. You may wonder why I put the illuminator on the top rather than sort of trying to do inside maybe getting a different case. What I want to do is change the torch or the illuminator to a different style because this is this is used for what I consider close range in barns and that type of thing. When I want to look for long distance animals then I'll change to a T74 which is the same sort of body but a larger head, so it'll give me a greater range. Now, the thing you've got to be aware of regarding the illuminator is it can take different what they call pills. Now, the pills are the actual LED lights themselves, so you can have different types. Now, the one in in this one, for instance, sorry, this one here is a pill that's similar to this. So it's an LED light transmitter, extremely powerful. Now in here at the moment is a, what they call a 940 nanometer. So it's completely invisible to the human eye. Some animals can probably see it. So it's an infrared light source, this one. Now it is not as powerful as this one here. This one here has a 850 nanometer type of light. So this one here has a dull glow, a red glow, and you can put inside there. But the reason why I chose the no glow version is because I don't want the animals to see that I'm stalking them. With the, the 850, it's got a greater range though. So you've got to keep that in mind, which pill you decide to go for. So that's the, the pills. 
Now, we're going to go up to the screen next. And I'll tell you what I did. Well, firstly, before I, I go to the screen, I thought that I would put in, some guys are doing a viewfinder. So I got a viewfinder from an old Sony camera and I thought I'd cut the hole in here and stick it in there and use that. But I found the resolution is not so good on it and it was somehow affecting my eyes. So in the end, I decided to go for the screen. So the reversing screen is just the typical one. This one's a supposedly high resolution, 840 by 640 by 480. This is a car one, so you can get it from China online as usual and it's just one like that now i will be providing links to all these parts and that i talk about so you can uh, see where i've got it from i just modified it to sit on the top of the spotter itself and um, probably some differences i made in this building this one is i hate losing things at night so if you have a look closely I've got an extra long bolt machined here, so it's easy to take that on and off. And also, on the spotter itself, I had this little knurl knob machined, so I can remove that in darkness also. One other difference that I did make to the reversing camera was I actually bought some of this tape, or not tape, sorry, um, it's film. Now this film I got from a uh, lighting company. They actually use that in for lights, for filming. So I cut a little bit of that and put it on the front of my spotter. Now, on the actual screen itself. Why would I do that? Well, what I found, the lights off, is when I turn my spotter on, it gives me a red, a red glow, and of course. You can adjust the focusing and that. But I found that with a black and white screen, it would reflect light back onto you. So again, I wanted to keep it covert as possible. So I cut a little bit of the screen, the material, and put it, forced it in just underneath, and it sort of sits nicely in there. So that's uh, another modification that I did on mine. And you also notice that the light, the rear of the spotter, is slightly different. I've got to fix up the holes, yep. Now, the light itself, I wanted, you can go for a standard switch, on-off switch, but when you travel four hours to go and get rid of some ferrules, and you want to make sure your gear's reliable, and I wanted to know whether the unit was on or off. Hence, I got a little push-button switch, which comes on beautifully and gives you a low glow when it's on, so it's not really disturbing to the animals, and I know I've got it on. Going down from that, I have got a charging port here. So that port allows me to charge up my internal battery, which I'll show you later. And I've got a power supply that powers up to the actual reversing screen. And I've got the RCA out, the video lead going out. Now I can change these wires so they're internal but they're a little bit sort of hanging out but I find for the time being that they're okay and the reason why I've done that is because the screen's a little bit sort of fragile even putting that in a box and I like to take things apart at the end of the night and and put them carefully in an enclosed box and I think this sort of perching on top might break one day and I really don't want that to happen so hence I just use these jacks so maybe at one stage I might put the jacks on top with the cables going in but I'll see now the laser the small little unit now that's a laser just to stand so why would you want to put a laser on a spotter simple reason is that when you're with a shooter and you want to direct the shooter who has night vision equipment too on there maybe instead of telescopic sights or an add-on or something like that you can tell the shooter 
where to shoot by the laser. So you've got it on, you've turned it on, you're looking around and you find your target. So all you have to do is turn on the laser and it throws a dot. So I've lined up the laser on to the middle of the screen. So wherever the laser, the pointer laser hits the object or the target, it shows up on the screen. And at night, you can actually see the laser, if it's really dark, you can see the beam of the laser going across, depending on the conditions, especially if it's a bit dusty or something like that. So hence the reason why I put a laser on. So it really helps if you're doing some night shooting with a partner. Now, another part of the actual unit itself is the handle. Now this, I got the handle from a catapult. So really, really useful and nicely contoured to the body or to the hand. So that's why I like that. And you just unscrew that and bolt it on. So you have to try and find one of these too.